Welcome to the Giants Huddle. Get him in the huddle, get him in the huddle, get him in the huddle. A New York Giants podcast. I'm John Schmelk, and welcome to another episode of the Giants Huddle podcast. This week's episode features Giants quarterback Daniel Jones. Remember, if you're listening on Giants.com or the Giants mobile app, that's great. But make sure you go to your favorite podcast platform, subscribe, add us to your favorites, and leave a positive review if you like what you hear. Now we're joined by our guest, Giants quarterback Daniel Jones. Daniel, let's start with this. You've been working in the spring program. Your field work is done. The rookies are here for another week after the veterans leave. Where do you think specifically you've made the most progress as a quarterback from when you stepped in this building to when you leave next week? Um, I think. I mean, I think it's it's in the playbook with with all that stuff. I think that's the that's a big challenge for um, for all us rookies, but particularly quarterbacks. You know, is is trying to get a an understanding of that to where you know you're getting out on the field and you're not having to. Um, you know, you're going to be thinking a lot in this position, but you're not having to think about too much that you can't handle and you can still process information and make decisions. So I think just, just trying to get more comfortable with that. And I think I, I have, um, you know, I have to some extent, but I'm looking forward to definitely getting more comfortable and kind of building off what we did this spring. What's the process like in, in learning a playbook for you when you show up and obviously, you know, concepts might be similar, but the language is totally different. What's the important parts for you? How do you go about just engrossing yourself in the playbook so much that it becomes second nature. I found that um, you know it really helps me to, to just write down the plays a whole lot and and you know draw them up. But really, like you know, like you said, the verbiage is, is something that uh, is an adjustment. So just writing it down as much as you can, and then kind of visualizing it from there, and and being able to see the see the play in your head. Um, but I found once you you know you write it down a lot, you draw it, you see it. And then you can kind of take that into your head because on the field you don't you know you don't have a piece of paper so you're gonna have to visualize it in your head and and that just kind of helps you you know organize the play call and then you know see it see it on the field so um, you know that all that all takes place in the meeting room and and um, you know obviously watching films a huge component of that and, and you know seeing it in a you know in a moving picture but you know in the notebook I found that you know just writing it down and and, and seeing it on the paper is is a good way to kind of get a lot of reps and and um, you know, do it over and over and over again. How much of it is memorization and how much is it understanding and grasping why plays are designed a certain way and why you're supposed to do certain things? Um, yeah, I think, you know, I think a, a, a large part of the base level knowledge, I mean, the formations and, you know, a lot of that stuff is memorization. You, you know, you're going to, you need to memorize that stuff, but, um, but yeah, when, you know, when we've got, you know, you can kind of memorize as much as you can the first couple installs, but kind of once they start stacking, once you start getting more information, um, you know, that memorization stuff, you, I don't know, it takes a guy a lot smarter than me to, to memorize <laughs> all that stuff, you know, I, I mean, I think, I think that's where it's, it's, you know, crucial to understand concepts and kind of how things work together and what we want to do, how we're going to build, uh, you know, certain routes based off certain formations, so just having an understanding of that, it kind of helps with that, and, and um yeah, I think the springs springs helped me there, but you know I've got a, a lot to learn still, and, and I'm looking forward to doing it. How similar or different are the concepts in terms of how you read a defense and react to what they're doing, or what they do here compared to what you did at Duke with David Cutcliffe? I think a lot of them, a lot of them are similar. Um, I'd say you know a big difference in, in all the concepts is just you know the depth of the routes. I think that's something you hear about uh, in the NFL compared to college, where um, you know college you're you know, most, you know, even your deeper concepts aren't as deep as, you know, the stuff we might have similar concepts, but they're five yards deeper here. Mm -hmm. And, and that, you know, is an adjustment and, and, uh, you know, just the timing of things and and expecting when things are going to get open. But, um, you know, I think a lot of the concepts are are similar, but there's just, you know, just so many more and, and, um, just a lot to, you know, just a lot, a lot more to, to learn. You talked a lot about with the media last week about, the importance of being able to see a defense and anticipating properly so the ball get where it has to go on time. How do you work on that? Is that something that has to be done with reps on the field? And how does it? How does the stuff in the classroom help you get where you need to go in terms of anticipation, which is so important in the NFL? Right. I mean, I think a lot of it is um, is on the field and and you know seeing the defense and reacting, you know, getting those those reps at that. But you know, you can you can. Um, you know, learn from them, learn from it, you know, watching film and, you know, uh, you know, kind of reviewing practice. I think, I think that's helpful too, to, um, you know, part, a big part of anticipation is, is expecting what a defense is going to do. And, and, you know, that happens, um, you know, after practice watching film and, um, yeah, you know, I think Coach Shul always says, um, 
you know, the job of the quarterback is to get the ball to the right person at the right time accurately. So, um, you know, knowing where it needs to go and at the right time is is crucial to to being successful, and I think a lot of that comes in, in anticipation. How do you think the multiple looks that James Betcher likes to throw out there has maybe sped up your education a little bit as a quarterback? Yeah, I think that's, um, you know, it's been it's been a lot. I think, um, you know, it's good for a young guy to, this, you know, this is my first exposure to NFL defense, and, um, you know, the fact that our defense can be so multiple and, and do a whole lot of different things is, um, you know, is an opportunity for me to learn, and, and um, it's been, it's been, uh, you know, like an adjustment, like it's all, like it all has, you know, just trying to learn as quick as I can. But, but yeah, hopefully it's, uh, it's good exposure early to, to, uh, you know, have to learn that style of defense and, you know, as many different looks as he has. What's a typical day like for you in the spring when you have an OTA, what you do before you get here and then what you do when you leave? Um, I try to get in the building, um, you know, about a, about an hour, hour and a half before we start meetings. And do you um, beat Eli in? Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, some days. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> he doesn't have as much prep work to do. Oh, that's I, true. He, that's he, true. He can, uh, <laughs> it's a little bit. <laughs> he's done it a few times. Yeah, a but, couple <laughs> times. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah. So I so just just uh, I think a big part is is prepping before practice, and um, you know we got the script, and you know hopefully I've done some work on it the night before. So I've I've you know kind of going over my work from the night before, and then uh, you know we got meetings, and then uh, out on the practice field. Um, come back we lift um you know have have position meetings again and then uh you know us rookies have a developmental program where we're meeting with uh david tyree and um you know ashley lynn their staff and and they're bringing in different people to speak to us kind of in a um you know kind of a an orientation type you know kind of rookie uh uh you know speakers different lessons to, to hear through that and then after that i'll um you know, start working on tomorrow's practice and, and uh, you know, reviewing anything from the day from that day's practice, working for uh, tomorrow's practice. So, What do you do that's unstructured on your own to kind of help you move along and, and just keep up with, with all the installations like you talked about earlier when, you know, you're not in a meeting room but you have free time? Yeah. I think, you know, a big part of that is before practice is, is getting in before and then um, and then after those rookie meetings, you know, I'll, I'll stay in the building and, um and try to you know try to get ready for tomorrow's practice and and just kind of just go over the day and see what see what I need to work on but um yeah I think a big part of of this process a big part of um you know an NFL practice is for a quarterback is, is seeing the script and preparing you know specifically for what you're going to do and and kind of going through scenarios in your head and and preparing that way you talked about the post practice quarterback meetings what are the conversations like when you're reviewing practice together in terms of what you go over for each play um, I mean, it depends on the play. You know, a lot of it's scheme based. Where, um, you know, if your de- the decision you made was the right one, if you made it at the right time, if um, you know the ball's accurate, why is it not accurate? Um, I think you, you know just all those things. And and me being the young guy, it's a, a huge opportunity for me to you know ask questions and to learn. And um, you know, you, you uh, those are those are big moments to learn. I mean, m- immediately after practice when you're watching the tape and you can kind of go over, um, you know, what's just happened and it's fresh in your mind. I know everyone asks you about how Eli's helping you along, but I think two guys that a lot of people don't talk about are Ryan Roder, who's in the quarterback room a lot with you guys, and Alex Tanny, who's a veteran. It's been in this league a long time. How have those two guys kind of helped you along uh, to, to get used to the NFL and, and just be prepared? Yeah, I think, um, you know, Coach Roder and, and, and Alex have helped me a, a great deal already. And, um, you know, I think, you know, that whole room with, with Eli and Kyle, Alex, Coach Roder, Coach Shula, I think we've all, um, you know, it's been it's been great for me to be with those uh, with those guys and how much experience everyone has in the room and, and to learn from them. But, um, you know, I think Alex is a guy who, who's, uh, you know, been in the league for, for a while and, and knows how uh, knows how it's supposed to look, know how, knows how you're supposed to prepare, and he's helped me a lot kind of in that uh, preparation aspect for practice and, and um, you know, taught me a few things and and how he how he prepares and and um you know what kind of helped him get ready and and reviewing the script and and coach Roder's helped me a a great deal too and and just uh just learning the offense and um you know working with me to to make sure I'm I'm moving along and 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 learning uh learning at the pace I need to so you know it's been great and I really appreciate uh both those guys but but everyone in the room I think has been has been great so far we talked about learning the playbook. Let's get to the field now because you have to take the meeting room to the field, right? 
for you when you get the play in, in your helmet mm-hmm. from Coach Schuler or, or Coach Shermer during practice, what's your process from when you get the play, you relay it, getting to the line of scrimmage and deciding where you want to throw the ball as a quarterback? What's your process to getting where you need to go and all those decisions you have to make in a span of just a few seconds? Yeah, so uh, getting the play call and, and – uh, you know, at Duke we weren't in the huddle, so the first right. thing, first thing here is to call, you know, to call it right in the huddle, and and um, so just kind of a quick picture of uh, hopefully it's something you've prepared for, right, and and you you kind of know have an idea what's coming, but but seeing it in your head and um, you know kind of picturing it and then uh, calling it, uh, you know, you can't really memorize all the all the calls necessarily, so it's kind of seeing it in your head and then calling it based off how you see it in your head, so. Um, Calling the play right is a, is, a, is a big part of that, and then getting up to the line, um, you know, you've got an idea what the read should be, so you're getting an idea what the what the defense looks like, and then from there you make a decision on on uh, you know protection and what you need if you need to do anything in protection if it's a pass play, um, if the run play is uh, is you know going to look like it could be successful, and and then uh, pass play, you know what the what the read's looking like, so. Um, a lot of a lot of things to think about, but um, you know, like I said, hopefully you prepare for them. Do you sense that process has started to slow down for you a little bit, especially once you get to the line of scrimmage and processing all that stuff quickly? Yeah, I think. I mean, I think it has. Um, it has to some extent, but uh, in the grand scheme of things, I'm still not not very far. You know, not not very far in, and I still have a still have a whole lot to learn. So hopefully, it it uh, you know keeps slowing down for me. What's it been like working with the wide receivers here, Sterling Shepard, Golden Tate? I'm sure you haven't thrown to guys with that type of speed and, and quickness before. What, what has it been like adjusting to the speed of the game in terms of the wide receivers? Um, yeah, you know, I mean, we had uh, we had a lot of uh, good receivers at Duke, and I think that's you know has, has helped me in this adjustment. But, I mean, everyone, I think everyone, uh, you know, everyone in the NFL is faster. I think that's an adjustment in – in and of itself, with the defensive backs and and you know the receivers too, I think we've got a lot of a lot of guys who can really run. Um, you know, a lot of quick guys and um, yeah. So so that is an adjustment. You know, understanding when when uh, you know someone breaks out, the ball needs to be put on the sideline. Right? There's no um, you know if you're late if you're late and with a deeper route and a faster guy, you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be you know inaccurate so so I think that's that's an adjustment but it's going well and and uh, I've really enjoyed working with those guys I saw a play at the final OTA uh last Thursday which I thought was kind of a sign that maybe you're starting to things are coming more natural I want to know if you agree with this there was a play I believe it was during the half line drills where you looked off to the left to the tight end running it out the middle linebacker moved you go right back to Benny Fowler on a little slant over the middle after you moved the linebacker with your vision are you getting more comfortable now where you can start worrying about some of those small nuances to succeed at the position because the plays and everything else is a little bit more comfortable for you? Yeah, I think so. I think, um, you know, a big, like I said, a big part is recognizing a defense and, and making a read based off that. So when you're comfortable with what the defense is, it kind of gives you a little bit more uh, a little bit more time to, to do some of those things. And, um you know, it's all situationally dependent on what it ac- what exactly it is, and and being able to recognize it. But um, yeah, I think I have gotten more comfortable in these first, uh, you know, in these first few weeks of of uh, you know, getting in this offense and and trying to learn. And and you know, like I've said, I look forward to to learning uh, learning more down the down the road. F- final football question for you: In terms of you physically as a quarterback, accuracy is the most important thing, right? How do you work on that in terms of becoming as accurate as as consistently accurate as you can? Is that a mechanical thing, a footwork thing? How do you improve that kind of physical part of your game heading into the NFL? Uh, I think you said. I think a big part of it is is footwork and, and making sure that your feet are tied up to. Uh, to your read, to to where the ball is going, um, and that you're there on time. You know, I've found that that I'm I'm in, in, inaccurate when you know you're late and you're rushing and and uh, you know you don't feel great about it and you're not exactly sure where he's going. Those are the times when you're when you're inaccurate. So so making sure your uh, you know your feet are tied to the read and and you're understanding uh, you know what's happening on the play. You're prepared for the for the play, for for the circumstance, and and that's when you can be most accurate. But I think a lot of it's feed, and and there's certainly a mechanical aspect of it too. So so just working those things, and 
um, you know, I'll certainly be working those in the next, you know, month leading up to training camp. Okay, now a couple of background questions in terms of how you got here real quick before we say goodbye. We thank you again for the time today as you guys are, are trying to get out of here for a long weekend. We appreciate it. You were a bit of a late bloomer, right? At sophomore in high school, were you about like 6'1", 170, something like that? Is that about yeah, right? Yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. I might have been a little smaller than that. But, uh, yeah, sophomore year of high school, my first year playing fo- playing uh, on the varsity team, um, I think I was I was around 150 pounds. Oh wow! Okay. Pounds, yeah, at, at around 510. So, so I, I you know grew some going into my junior year and and uh, got better. Uh, now here's a question: because I, I sense this sometimes with guys that go through this. You have to learn certain skills to succeed, right? When you're only 510, 150, you're going against bigger, faster guys. You got to learn tricks, right, right. To, in order to succeed. How much do you think that helped you when you grew into the body you have now and you became physically? you know, more like the other players you're going against. Do you think that helped you become a better football player? I think it did. Um, you know, I think, um, you know, at that size, I could never throw the ball very hard or very far. So, uh, you know, I had to work on different things and putting the ball where I wanted to put it and, um, you know, focus on on uh, making sure I was I was on time because if I wasn't, someone was going to overrun my arm. I mean, that, that kind of stuff. But, um yeah, I remember I used to get I used to get hit pretty good. We had some, you know playing against <laughs> guys a lot bigger than you, so you so you uh, you know learn to learn to get up and shake it off. So I mean I think all those things, but um, yeah I w- I uh, I grew late. It you know I was lucky it it, uh, it worked out for me and and um, you know but but yeah I think that's a good point. I think you learn a lot of different things when you're. Uh, you know, kind of playing in that situation. You kind of reference tough toughness there. Is that something you really take pride in your toughness? Yeah, it is. I think it's all it's always it always has been uh, for me. I think that's a you know I think it's a critical part to being a, a good football player, particularly a, a good quarterback. And um, you know, obviously with someone like Eli, who's played as long as he had, I think you can see uh, you can see pretty clearly where where toughness can get you. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's a big part of the game, and I certainly take a lot of pride in it. Leading up to the draft on the Move the Sticks podcast with Daniel Jeremiah, I'm not sure if you listened to it, but he interviewed your brother and your two sisters, and they talked about your epic two-on-two basketball games and all your competition you had as a kid. How do you think that helped kind of mold you into the player and, and, and the person you are now? Um, yeah, I mean, those, bas- those basketball games were a lot of fun. I mean, I think I think just growing up with, with three siblings who were all athletic and – um, you know, we're always doing something. We're always playing, playing something, playing outside, and um, you know, what was a big part of um, you know how we all uh, you know found a way to play play sports past high school. I think that you know, I think just just having those uh, you know, like those two on two games, those moments in the backyard, and and you know, just kind of a um, you know, just just you know, an active childhood where we were always, always outside and, and, um, and playing something. I think that had a lot to do with, uh, you know, our success in organized a- athletics and, and, uh, you know, it's been fun to watch them and it was certainly a fun way to, w- fun way to grow up. Have you had a second to step foot in New York city and have a little bit of fun and kind of soak it in a little bit, or you just been in, in your playbook for the past three months? <laughs> uh, I've been in the city a couple of times. Uh, do you couple, like it? Yeah, I do. It's, uh, it's uh it's fast and it takes some adjusting too and the traffic um, yeah but i will say there there's some there's some great food been to some great restaurants and and um i think that's uh yeah it's, it's cool so i'm i'm looking forward to getting to know it a little bit better oh, you think you're going to have to uh show maybe rj barrett the ropes in about a week <laughs> what are your thoughts on that yeah that would be uh that would be <laughs> awesome i mean i've uh i really enjoyed watching him at duke he's a heck of a player and um yeah if the Knicks got him that'd be that'd be awesome so hopefully Hopefully that uh, hopefully that works out. Look forward to seeing it. Final question: Have you maybe gone off the rails a little bit and, and taken a little peek at some of the game film from last year in 2018 to see what the Giants did with these with this system in games? Do you see maybe what might be in store looking ahead? Uh, yeah, I think um, to me, you know, I think that's a helpful part of the kind of the learning process is to see, uh, you know, see concepts that we're running here in practice, running, you know, in the mm. in the games, and um, you know, see what you know, other defenses are doing to them. And, and, uh, yeah, I think that's been, that's been cool to see too, is, is kind of, um, you know, we, we got, we call a bunch of things in practice. What are we, you know, what was called in this game, what was called in that game and, and how did it look? But, um, yeah, I think that's, that's cool. I'm trying to kind of 
uh, make my way through those games and, and uh, learn as much as I can from them. Are you pumped to do it against an yeah. opponent? I, I I know we have a lot of time off here. we got about like five weeks. You get back for camp, then another couple weeks before the first preseason game. Are you itching, though? Are you ready to take all this hard work, this monotonous stuff, where it's fun and you love it, but it's a lot of work, mm-hmm. where you finally actually get to put the jersey on, the helmet on, and go against an opponent? How, how jacked are you to finally get a chance to do that? Yeah, it's uh, I mean, I'm excited. This is... Uh, you know it's awesome to be here in New York, and and you know just to just to wear the Giants helmet, the Giants uniform will be uh, will be awesome. So I, you know I'm I'm looking forward to looking forward to getting out there, getting the season rolling, and um, look forward to what we can do this year. Daniel, great stuff. We appreciate it. Thank you for the time, and best of luck. Enjoy your break, and we'll see you back at the end of July. All right. All right. Thanks for having me, John. That's Giants quarterback Daniel Jones. Great to talk to him. As you can see, folks, the Giants franchise is in good hands as we move into the future. Thanks for joining us on this week's episode of the Giants Settle Podcast. Again, if you're listening on Giants.com or the Giants app, that's great. But please go to your favorite podcast platform, subscribe, add us to your favorites, and leave a positive review. We'll see you next time on the Giants Settle Podcast. Adios.